You know, I get it. It's just cartoons. I understand more important things are happening in 2020, and I'm only getting older. I ain't the hip teen I thought I was when I started this channel all those years ago. But no matter how old I get, I will always have a passion for animation. I will always be thankful for the many shows that have touched my heart over the years, going back to when I was a child. And that's why thinking about this topic makes me sad. It makes me ranty, it makes me venty. Truly, it puts me all over the place. For the first time since, what, 2009 with CN Real, it truly feels like all the tired critiques about Cartoon Network are starting to have a hint of truth to them. I am honestly scared of the direction Cartoon Network is heading. And if you are a fan of animation, a fan of this beloved channel, no matter what era of it you grew up in, maybe you should be scared too. Now, I am not someone who likes to fearmonger. I am not someone who enjoys making rant videos on networks, over-exaggerating details and drawing attention to people who, honestly, could give less than a damn about what strangers on the internet have to say about them, because Teen Titans Go! is ready to premiere another season. Granted, I have dabbled in rant videos in the past, but even then, I knew the people in charge weren't necessarily to blame. And I still feel that way. When it comes to business, like most situations, things are far from black and white. To be blunt, what we're about to see go down at Cartoon Network, what we're already starting to see, ultimately goes far beyond the network. It goes far beyond the studio. It boils down to the root of all evil. Money. Or, in this case, debt. Lots and lots of debt. AT&T was a company already in debt, and what's arguably their biggest attempt to stay afloat while also continuing to expand, the goal of any multi-billion dollar corporation, was the acquisition of Time Warner in June of 2018. An acquisition that came at the hefty price of $85 billion. The content and creative talent at Warner Bros, HBO, and Turner are first rate. Combine all that with at and strengths in direct-to-consumer distribution, and we offer customers a differentiated, high-quality, mobile-first entertainment experience. We're going to bring a fresh approach to how the media and entertainment industry works for consumers, content creators, distributors, and advertisers," said at and chairman and CEO Randall Stevenson. Spoiler alert, he retired his position as CEO earlier this year. And as of August 5th, 2020, the long-term debt for AT&T is at over $153 billion. Combined with their current debt of over $15 billion, and we have nearly $170 billion debt. What does this have to do with cartoons? Well, the end goal for the entertainment industry is, well, a profit. AT&T acquired Time Warner under the assumption that the properties they own can generate more than enough money to not only pay off their debt, but, you guessed it, see a profit. And as the merger itself got the ball rolling, I imagine those working at now Warner Media Animation Studios were scared. Mergers can get pretty ugly, and jobs are on the line. But, as one would imagine, it's not only jobs. Creativity can be compromised as well. So when the parent company has the expectation of making money, those underneath said parent company suddenly face the immense pressure to ensure that they're having hit after hit produced. Products that are not only well received critically, but commercially. And because of that, risk have to be scaled back. Original IPs have to be scaled back. And while a bulk of prominent figures shimmying out of Cartoon Network is already a red flag, the first big gut punch, and the catalyst for me even making this video, made itself known on Friday, October 16th. When Geneva Hodgson, just one of the many modern day animation legends who worked on OKKO, revealed that her smash pilot Trick Moon, one of the most popular pilots released by the network this year by far, would not be going forward with development. Earlier this week, I got the call from Cartoon Network telling me that they are not going to be going forward with development on Trick Moon. This is not a result of a lack of enthusiasm on your part, or the fault of any other project at Cartoon Network. Sadly, my project is just one of many casualties of corporate restructuring. I love Trick Moon, its characters, the cast and crew, and everyone who gave it such a warm welcome. I couldn't be more proud and grateful for this whole experience. It was really a dream come true. Love, Geneva. 
This hit hard in more ways than one. It truly felt like Trick Moon was going to be the next Infinity Train. A pilot that's released onto YouTube, completely takes off, generates a ton of theories and fan art, and its presence would be strong enough of a case to get itself greenlit so it can fully realize its potential and greatness. And oh, we're gonna touch on Infinity Train too, don't worry. Trick Moon's rejection serves as a statement, one that's rather unfortunate. A solid premise, cast of characters, Rock and crew and immediate dedicated passionate fans may no longer be enough to get picked up, both in terms of getting greenlit and just renewed for another run of episodes. Sure, your show could be good, but how good is it? Is it good enough to even make a dent in $170 billion worth of debt? Debt also goes hand in hand with the reality that we're simply heading into a new era of Cartoon Network as it now falls under new leadership. A familiar face who's had a hand in plenty of shows that we love throughout the years. Someone who now has to steer the network and studio in a direction that will please the higher-ups. I mean, just imagine how nerve-wracking that can be. If there's anything the presidents of Cartoon Network are, no matter what rant videos or angry tweets will tell you, it's that they're passionate about animation. They know the rundown, they know how powerful animation is, they know how much these stories mean to people out there how formative these stories can be. But especially now more than ever, they also recognize the hard truth. For as long as there's a parent company, they'll always need a parent company. They're just going to be a cog in the machine. All that passionate creative storytelling is second to the money that they need to bring in. They recognize the sobering reality that their network, the studio, it's all sadly just a cog in a massive machine. And they had to be selective about the stories they're bringing to life because behind those stories are millions upon millions of dollars. Trick Moon's rejection is an example of this. With corporate restructuring, we're going to see less of new, innovative ideas. Because it's all about chasing that bag. And if your show isn't a hit, boom, that's all she wrote, you're done. So what future programming can we expect? Well, I'm not trying to say that we're never going to get any original ideas, any new concepts ever again. But they're going to be put second to what the network feels clearly brings in money. In 2020, only one show has premiered on Cartoon Network, Thundercats Roar. And well, I, I don't think we're going to hear from it anytime soon. But in 2021, so far we only have confirmation of one show premiering on Cartoon Network. We Baby Bears, a show that's shaping up to be more than just a full-length series of Baby Bear flashback episodes. Honestly, I'm excited for Wee Baby Bears. If the art style's any indication, it's gonna be hella cute, leaning much more into anime influence with zany adventures. And just by reading the synopsis, you can tell this isn't necessarily geared towards a preschool crowd. It truly does just seem like a zanier Wee Bear Bears, one that can completely stray away from the grounded aspects of the original series. But let's really think about this. Tig and Seek and the Fungies, two shows that I've also enjoyed from what I've seen, No Tea No Shade, were originally slated to premiere on Cartoon Network but got pushed to HBO Max. Wee Baby Bear seems as if it'll be a mainline series. But pair this with the news of a new Batman reboot that does seem geared more towards children, that's going to be simulcast on both Cartoon Network and HBO Max, Teen Titans Go remaining evergreen on the network despite declining ratings, alongside Total Drama Rama making decent waves among its target demographic, and getting renewed for additional episodes. It's pretty clear to see what Cartoon Network finds lucrative. Reboots, revivals, reimaginings, spin-offs, whatever it may be, it's pretty clear that they want to see innovation with existing IPs that have already been proven to be successful. Existing IPs that can garner viewership, help garner HBO Max subscriptions, and sell that sweet, sweet merchandise. Now, I do want to put it out there, I am not anti-reboot, anti-revival, anti-spinoff, whatever the case may be. While I can't say I've cared for a lot of the reboots we've gotten over the years in particular, hell, we know how everyone feels about Powerpuff Girls 2016, I can't say any of them deeply offended me. And if anything, PBG 2016 taught the network to make quality reboots not be blatantly corporate mandated, and get executive producers who are not only passionate about the property they're working on, but depending on the property being revived, have an outstanding track record when it comes to their past experiences with animation. Look, if you're gonna reboot Johnny Bravo, Dexter, Courage, whatever the case may be, if you can't get the original showrunners, then you better attach someone who's going to get people excited. A familiar face who had a significant hand in animated hits that people go crazy for. 
And ah, uh, I don't want to get too negative, but please drop the uniform Cartoon Network art style that's become common across many shows and pilots. Now, I could be wrong in saying this, but I truly doubt that the people working on these shows, including the showrunners themselves, want all of their cartoons to look the same, especially in a way that validates all of the abhorrent Cal art style means that poison animation discussions online. Like with each passing year, it feels like this godforsaken gif is manifesting itself into reality. And also, I'm not gonna lie, it feels like Cartoon Network put themselves in a situation even before the AT&T merger. Although cable ratings have dwindled across the board, a statistic that will always be a good out for Cartoon Network, there's a direct correlation between their falling ratings and their schedule becoming grossly saturated with the same three shows, relegating the rest of their shows to premiering just once and time slots that are half-heartedly advertised and then never re-ran again. The original CV Universe series was not just popular because of the internet, it was also popular because it re-ran like crazy. But notably 2017 is when they cut pretty much all reruns and got into this weird mindset where we only need to premiere these episodes once, then put it on the app, make it available digitally, and we'll never rerun any of these episodes again until we're getting close to new premieres where we're going to rerun them just once at random time slots where barely anyone is watching. Hell, you want to watch most of the 2010s Cartoon Network library? Get your ass on HBO Max. Yeah, that's also kind of crazy, huh? Cable is so goddamn expensive. Yet, if you want to watch properties from this one studio, you're shit out of luck with cable, you're basically shit out of luck with the app, even though you're paying, what, five, six, seven, eight times more? Reruns help a show grow. Hell, a lot of these shows, even the ones that wanted to be serialized, had to conform and sacrifice so many episodes to the episodic gods, only for them to not even be reran again in the first place. What's the point of putting them on streaming if they're not even made to be aired in a streaming format? Rebecca Sugar and her team had to produce so many tiny episodes, and for what? They don't even air on television! The fact that we have episodes, like a regular epic final battle, change your mind, reunited, come along with me, you're in control, Dark Plaza, let's fight to the end, welcome to the underworld, whole as many series, and they never air on television? You only premiered them once? And shove them off to streaming? I get it, you can run higher ad rates on certain shows, but the reason why we're probably only going to get reboots, revivals, spin-offs of successful IPs, and why new ideas will probably only be created by high-profile animation legends is because the damn TV channel barely re-ran these shows in the first place. And I think that's most evident in quarantine. While I'm sure a lot of people had to drop cable because of the pandemic, I truly feel like those first few months were make or break time. The fact we had a pandemic, honest to God, should have been Cartoon Network's time to go, huh? If we're gonna have even just a little bit of more eyes on our schedule, we can mix up our programming and try to get some new fans on board for a lot of our shows, even if they're over. But instead, we got nothing. But you know, two dines go, gumball, etc. If they truly felt like streaming and social media was going to be how these shows would thrive, they could have done so much more to give these shows gas. Do you honest to God know how many times I've been told by people who work on shows? that channels like this do a better job of spreading the word on shows than the networks themselves? That's asinine, that should not even be a thought that happens, but it happens. And these networks see us, they know we exist. It should not have been hard to adapt and switch up the promotion for their shows, showcase enticing scenes for anyone of any age, drop the kitty pandering with their advertisement because kids hate feeling like they're being talked down to, especially by advertisements. And I promise a bulk of these shows would have had a lot more gas. Why the fuck? No disrespect to Uncle Grandpa, I love Uncle Grandpa, but when he really laid out the table, why the fuck was that series ran more than the entirety of Steven Universe Future? Which people to this day are still figuring out exists, by the way. I know so many people who say, oh, I wouldn't have gotten into this or that cartoon if it wasn't for you constantly posting about it, tweeting about it, posting these scenes, because the network doesn't do that. If they actually reran these shows, showcase some badassery in their little five second bumpers, and didn't come out swinging with a hey kids approach. And I feel this with Infinity Train more than anything. This show still has the potential to be your big modern hit Cartoon Network. HBO Max or not. 
books one and two should have been, and honestly, should still be, re-ran to hell and back when they aired. But nope, once both those books finished, poof, gone, not even on the Cartoon Network website anymore. Pandemic, summer, spring break, whatever you argue, people who still have cable should still be able to find something new, something that's a change of pace. But everything that qualified for that over at Cartoon Network went out the goddamn window. And honestly, the fact that the Infinity Train crew wants to do eight books, yet we still don't know if it's going to get renewed for those books. The fact that its success on HBO Max's launch date and for book three apparently decided the fate of the series is fucking dumb. And I'll tell you why. So many people get attached to shows on streaming just by browsing and diving in. HBO Max isn't even on Roku or Fire Stick yet. Two big streaming platforms. Most of its potential customers don't even have access to it still. Everyone who has streaming, and I mean everyone who has streaming, always finds new shows or movies they get addicted to and binge all in one sitting. I'm confident in saying that out of all of the HBO Max original content, Infinity Train is one of the best they have. And if it's cut short before it's able to fully realize its complete vision would be one of the biggest mistakes they would make. Not just for changing the conversation of animation because Infinity Train is powerful, it's just one of the greatest shows, period, and can move any one of any age but because now if we end up in a world where infinity train is incomplete people in the future regardless of age are going to throw it on hbo max get absolutely hooked and find there's no more left oh would you recommend this show hmm i would i really enjoyed it but it kind of just stops before answering the major questions that sucked oh well i don't want to waste my time saying that's going to be incomplete thank you Instead of, hey, should I check out this show? Yes, you should. I binged all eight books. It's amazing. You won't regret it. I know they're looking for immediate cash grabs, but damn, some things need to play the long con, especially when they're not easily accessible. I honestly do not know what to expect for the future of Cartoon Network, but I am kind of scared. Again, we could get reboots and they can be great, they can be fine as they are, but the idea of no longer having serialized overarching stories with new exciting worlds and characters that can get people of all ages invested, especially when that's something that people are looking for, including kids that are proud of their environment, they're inspired by their older peers, they see their older peers are invested in serialized storytelling now, they're going to want that as well. The idea of that going away, dwindling down, it sucks, because it's seems like that was a great direction we're heading towards. Hell, Netflix is still heading towards it. And honestly, reboot or not, Cartoon Network is better off just jacking Netflix's style. Seriously, you want to reboot? Do it like how Netflix did. Greenlight a serialized reimagining of a series in full from the jump. Let the crew rock out and go wild and then release it into the world, whether if it's on television or HBO Max. I don't know, I kind of lost track, but also I think I just said everything I needed to say. I've been in this booth for an hour. There's one more elephant in the room that I just need to mention. If everything I'm saying is true, and currently this current face of Cartoon Network is a large consequence of AT&T's debt, then there's a sibling of Cartoon Network who needs to be addressed, as they also play a piece of this puzzle. Puzzle of and solving the affairs of the cartoon, I don't know. Warner Brothers Animation. Cartoon Network, DC, and Warner Bros. themselves have all had projects produced at WBA Studios. But if they're already becoming even more selective of what goes from development to series, at least at one studio, it has to make you think about the bigger picture. If AT&T is looking to save some money, do they really need two animation studios? And keep in mind, they really are two different animation studios. Individual workplaces within Burbank. And although I doubt the Cartoon Network branding can ever die, maybe the two actual studios and the higher-ups within won't remain separate entities. I'm not necessarily sure what that would mean, what that would look like, how that could affect their projects in literally every aspect, but we're living in strange times. So it could be a possibility worth putting out there. Give Steve Universe another series for homophobia crippling the original in Cartoon Network. Please be smart about this. Because if you are going in the reboot direction, just remember, Powerpuff Girls 2016 is your template. No consumer is going to want a reboot like that. Anyways, I need to do an outro. As always, these are just my thoughts. I'm tired. I want to hear your thoughts. Drop them in the comments below. And for more cartoon goodness beyond the videos, follow us at either Twitter or Instagram at RoundtableVids. And you can follow me at Austric Vox. Help that type of girl by either becoming a member of this channel or supporting us over at Patreon. Link in the description. If you enjoyed this video, please throw a like and subscribe to the Roundtable for more great cartoon content. Thank you for watching, and I hope you have an awesome day. Austric Vox, signing out.